Hi everyone, it's Michelle from Country Morning Creations. A little backstory on what I have here. I won this Coco and Reno four pocket folder from the Charming Planner. It was sent to me. She had created a sped up version of the tutorial, but I couldn't figure it out from her tutorial. There were a couple of places that just didn't make any sense to me. So I actually wrote them and they have a tutorial. Basically they send you a PDF and it tells you how to do all this. So I'm going to use that PDF. Um, I tried printing it out and something was wrong with my printer so I don't have it printed out but I do have it on my computer. I've also printed out some tags. Everything is kind of plain right now some uh, journaling cards, and then two pieces of eight and a half by 11 paper. They are printed the same on both sides. And this is important because the first thing we have to do is use these die cuts to cut these this paper out, um, and they have to be mirror images of each other. And that will make a lot more sense when we go to put all this together. So the first thing is, hold on. I need to cut this paper in half. This is kind of the tricky part because this part is fine. It's this part, oops, I set my, board down on top of it. This is exactly um, five, I want to say, yeah, the width is exactly five and a half inches for this. And I could possibly cut it this direction, but that does not leave me, I mean, it leaves me just a little bit and it's not going to work. So I am going to go ahead and cut both pieces at the five and a half inch mark. And technically, I can simply use these pieces and then I have a whole nother piece over here. Let's try this. I am going to grab my Sizzik. I also have a magnetic platform, a magic mat from scrapbook.com. It's a self-healing piece. And I also have my paper. So I'm just going to make sure I have everything all matched up in here. And it's between the two pieces that are going to cut. There we go. Now I'm going to run this through. Move this over so you can see it. I do like to run things through twice just to make sure that everything gets cut. We're going to run this back through again. And the cool thing about this die is it does two things. It doesn't just cut, it also scores for you. So you don't have to cut score or make score lines. So as you can see that piece came out and there are actually score lines I don't know if you can see these, but there are actually score lines along here. All right, so now I've got this one and I have this piece. So this piece is going to be up this time. I'm going to take this and line everything up again so that it's all between the cut pieces, the pieces that would do the cutting. And I imagine if you didn't worry about wasting paper, it wouldn't be a big deal that you could potentially, whoops, got a piece left on here from the previous cut, that you could potentially, um, you know, just use a whole eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper for each of these. I'm trying to conserve a little bit of paper and you're going to see why. All right, let me grab my Big Shot again, get my Distress Inker out of here, and we are going to cut another one. 
Now, mine does not make all those cracky noises anymore because I have very used uh, plates. But if you're using a Big Shot for the first time, that creaking and crackling noise is very normal. Also, I'm not cutting into one of these. I'm simply um, cutting into a mat so it's much quieter. All right. So again, we have, I think you can see it a little bit better on this piece. I have the score marks and I have the uh, other pieces. Now, this is what I want to do with this piece. I'm going to cut this in half again. Just go for it and see if I can figure this out. So have you ever had one of those situations where you are, you have something in your mind and you're not sure it's going to work on paper and literally in this case on paper. Um, so I kind of have an idea. Yes, my desk is very messy. If you know me, I've even shown pictures of my chair that's in this room. All right, there is another half piece. So in this one, we're going to need to run it through twice because these are the pockets. So for the pockets, I need this piece and not this piece. I'm going to take this. And let's see if we cut this way. <clears throat> and again, we're going to do mirror images. I'm going to cut this. You know what? Hold on. I'm going to move this over because I'm trying, like I said, I'm trying to not use a ton of this and maybe have some left over for other parts of this project. All right, this goes in through and back. And then we flip this piece over like this. And we're going to see if we can run it through again this is going to work. Famous last words. All right, let's see what we got. So that actually didn't quite work the way I wanted it to, but let's see how close we are to these two pieces being pretty much the same. Um, they are pretty darn close. This just a little bit more was cut off of this one than that one. Uh, and then, hmm, oh yes, exactly. So there, now we have our two pockets and I think that's close enough, I'm not going to worry about it. This part, what I want to do is use only this part for it. I'm going to line this up onto here. And again, this is not going to, this side this time, because it's going to be the same, is not going to matter which side this is cut on because it'll be the same on both sides. All right, this is the last cut we're doing in this whole thing. I do want to take that extra piece off. There we go. All right. So we're going to run this through and run it back. That's just a personal thing. You don't probably have to run it. If you have a good die, you don't have to run it through twice. And now we have an extra flap piece that we can use as well for this. So we've done all the cuts we need. We have our two pieces. We have our two pockets. 
and we have an extra flap over here. So here's our two pockets. Reading the directions now, it says make creases on all the fold lines. I'm actually going to skip that part right now because I am going to, I'm, I'm not going to do that so that I can match this up. I'm going to, I am going to make creases on these lines just a little bit so it stands out better because this is kind of the, the tricky part that I was not sure about how to do. And we want to line this up like this where the, the fold matches up. So we'll have glue on that flap and that flap. I'm not sure which way I like better. I don't think it really matters to start with because we can bend it the other way. All right, I'm gonna put glue on this flap. And then I'm going to put glue on the inside of this flap. Line them up. And this is where having that kind of a bend helps because I can make sure this all lines up correctly and is all lined up all together. And I'm feeling like this isn't. There we go. Now at that end and that end, and we're going to just press this down good and flat. Now the question is, do we want our pockets to go this direction and have this on the outside? Or do we want our pockets to go this direction and have this on the outside? I think we're going to go this way. So what you'll find is there are a couple of more fold lines that have been made. And then there's also this one and this gets folded under as well. And that's going to go there. We're going to fold this one also the same direction. And then we need to fold this one under as well. So for this part to make the pockets, we now need to run a bead of glue across the bottom and up the sides. So I'm going to do it on this part because if you don't put the glue on the bottom, then it stuff will fall out the bottom. And then we just fold that in like that and press the bottom so that it's glued at the bottom. Ooh, pretty. All right, and we're going to do this one as well. Fold that in and give all that glue a good press. Get the glue off the table. <laughs> now we're going to reverse the, the direction of this uh, fold in the middle here because we are now going to go this direction with it. And so it looks like it kind of has a little spine. I love that look. And then on the inside, you now have your pocket with your thumb holes already cut, which is awesome. The next part is, uh, wait, you know what? Let's not make it match. We're going to use this side. And these are the other two pocket pieces. So you'll see one will go here. One will go on the other side. like that. We're going to go ahead and glue these flaps down as well. They show on the tutorial PDF that you can wrap this around to the back side. I personally prefer the, the card to be just glued onto it like this instead of wrapping this. So you, let me show you. 
you can actually stick it on like this. I don't think that's as a finished look that, that I'm looking for. So I am just creating a more finished look, I think, personal opinion, obviously. You can do whatever you like with this and hold that down just a little bit. And there we have our pocket folder. This is exactly how it looks on the PDF. It looks just like this. And you can go ahead and maybe fill it up. You can put a couple of tags here. You can put a couple of tags here. And you can put some tags, maybe another a tag in each of these pockets. And let's put a card, let's put a journal card in each one of these. So technically, this would be considered done. This is a done pocket folder. This is exactly how their tutorial goes. Next up, I will be taking this and altering it to make it into an envelope. 